welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the pH of oxides. This video is aimed at those of you studying National 4 Chemistry. It will also be suitable for those of you studying S3 Chemistry who may be looking at similar topics. It will also be helpful for people in National 5 who are about to move on to the acids topic. Let's start by looking at the pH scale. Here we have the pH scale shown using the colours of Universal Indicator. The pH scale runs from below 1 to above 14, but we tend to work on the 1 to 14 scale. In the middle we have 7, which is neutral. pH 1 to 6 are acidic and pH 8 to 14 are alkaline. The more acidic something is, the lower the pH number, and the more alkaline something is, the higher the pH number. So how do we make acids and alkalis? Well, water has a pH of 7 and is neutral. If we add substances to water, we can affect its pH. If we add soluble metal oxides to water, then we can form alkaline solutions. Metals are found on the left-hand side of the periodic table in the area highlighted here. If you have a metal oxide which is soluble, and you can find that information on page 8 of your data book, then you will form an alkaline solution. To make an acid, you need to use a soluble non-metal oxide. Non-metals are found in this region of the periodic table. If your, if your oxide is insoluble, it will not affect the pH of water as it does not dissolve and it will remain neutral. If you have a, met a metal oxide, you can find out if it's insoluble using this table here on page 8 of your data book. Pause the video now and try and predict the pH of the following solutions. So for a prediction of pH, you don't have to be exact, you just need to be in the right region. So sodium oxide, if you look at the table on page 8 of your data book, you will find is soluble and therefore you will find that it will have a pH which is greater than 7, so it's an alkaline. Iron oxide, on the other hand, is insoluble, therefore it will not change the pH of water and it will remain as 7 and neutral. Sulphur dioxide, you would find hard to know if it was soluble or insoluble, so if you assume that it is soluble, is a non-metal, therefore it will be a pH of less than 7 and an acid. So what effect do these metal and non-metal oxides have on the environment? Let's focus on the non-metal oxides. There are three in particular that are important, carbon dioxide, sulphur dioxide and the oxides of nitrogen. Carbon dioxide you're likely to be familiar with so we'll start there. Carbon dioxide is formed in a number of different ways. The most important way is through burning of fossil fuels. So that is in factories and power plants or in cars. Another important way is through the making of cement. We produce a lot of carbon dioxide and this goes up into the atmosphere where it causes many problems. The most widely known problem is global warming. Carbon dioxide is important for the warmth of the earth. Without carbon dioxide we would be significantly colder than we are now. However, through human activity we've raised the levels of carbon dioxide and therefore caused the greenhouse effect. This has caused the earth to warm up more than it should. Other things which are a problem due to carbon dioxide are ocean acidification. This has an effect on the coral life within the ocean and therefore other life within the ocean too. And finally, acid rain. Carbon dioxide can contribute towards acid rain. It's a non-metal oxide which is slightly soluble in water. Sulphur dioxide is produced when fossil fuels are burned, particularly when we burn coal. 
When the sulphur within coal is burned, it combines with oxygen to produce sulphur dioxide, which is released into the environment. The main problem with sulphur dioxide is that it contributes to acid rain. Again, it's a non-metal oxide and it is soluble, so it forms acids within rain, which then fall and can damage plants, can damage buildings and can damage animals. Finally, the nit oxides of nitrogen. These are produced naturally during thunderstorms because of lightning. However, that's only a small amount of, nit of the oxides of nitrogen that are produced. They are mainly produced through petrol car engines. The oxides of nitrogen are then released up into the atmosphere where they produce acid rain. They are non-metal oxides and when they dissolve in water they produce acids. Like sul the sulphur dioxide, when these acids form, they then fall in the rain and can damage buildings, plants and animals. Thank you for watching my video, I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem, Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for regular updates on new videos and flashcard quizzes. Thanks for watching, bye for now.